All right, guys, we're group 45. This is our product. It's called Bale Blankets. My name is Nick Warner. I'm Mary Lawson. I'm Sadie. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that a lot of you guys are not big on the agricultural industry and don't know a whole lot about um, large-scale agriculture, um, natural beef production, or anything like that. So I'm going to teach this at like a third grade level of how we develop this product. Please don't take any offense to it. Um, I just want to be able to convey what it is. So um, these are cows, and those are hay bales. Cows eat hay bales. We all good? We got this concept? We're good to go? Sweet. Now, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you get out of bed all groggy, you go and make yourself some breakfast, some eggs and bacon or seaweed or oatmeal or whatever else. And then you might take a nutritional supplement because you might not get everything you need out of your breakfast for your body to be healthy. Cattle are the exact same way. They eat several different kinds of hay most times, and they don't always get all the vitamins and minerals that they need out of that hay, and so ranchers have to supplement that with a mineral supplement. These wraps, oh, well, we're going back, and we're here. This is a normal hay bale. It has everything a cow needs except for some key minerals, okay? Now, most hay is grown close to where the cattle are kept. And the reason for this is it's very expensive to transport. Now, these bales are wrapped in a form of plastic wrap. Normally, when a rancher feeds this, they have to cut the wrap off and burn it or dispose of it in some other way. It's very costly. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Our idea is to make a wrap with this edible food packaging that would be fed in these feeders that would supplement the minerals to the cattle. Now, these feeders work in such a way that they'll throw the bale into the top with the forks on the front of this tractor, and then it'll spin and chop the hay out through the bottom after the rancher has cut the bale, wrapped with his pocket knife, and pulled it out of the bale. Now, this is a huge pain in the butt and takes a lot of time. With our product, you would toss the bale in there, wrapped in all, and the chopper in the bottom of this bale feeder would chop up the mineral wrapping and spit it out with the hay for the cows to consume so they can get their minerals each and every day. These are the current mineral products on the market. Um, they usually come in pallets of minerals, and ranchers will distribute them once every two weeks, depending on the concentration, um, after they have to go feeding. So this would save ranchers both time and money. I'll let them take it away. <laughs> so for the first pricing strategy, we're going to go with penetration pricing. And we're going to price our product at about $90 a roll, just because um, the regular wraps are about $80 to $150. So we think by pricing it at $90, it stays very competitive with the current products on the market. Um, then after penetration pricing, we're going to move into value added pricing, uh, just because our product we think is better than a regular wrap. Uh, so we're going to go up to $120 for that product. Um, and then after that, we will move into variability based on uh, regions and minerals uh, with value-based pricing. So we're going to keep it within $120 to $130. Um, and that will vary based on regions and the different minerals that each region needs put into uh, the certain wraps. Uh, but we will make sure it stays within that range. Um, and for promotion, we're going to do TV, highway, radio, and news, no, newspaper. And we're also going to do uh, sponsorships and local rodeos and fairs. Um, so TV is a great way to do it because um, a lot of these people who live in rural areas don't have access to um, a lot of cable. And we were thinking we would do it for um, channels that are accessible by DISH Network, so things like CBS, NBC, and Fox News, and we could run ads on those channels so that even people who live in these rural areas can see that. And highway radio is a great option because 
Um, a lot of people who are ranchers spend most of their day on a pickup truck or tractor, and so in order to keep themselves entertained, they'll listen to highway radio. So this way, uh, we're showing our product to people who would be directly interested in it, and you know they're already listening to it anyways, and then this way they will hear about a product that they would probably want to use. Um, and then for a newspaper, people who don't watch TV or don't listen to the radio or don't have any sort of internet access likely will at least read the newspaper. Um, and it's pretty common in these areas for people to be regular newspaper readers, so uh, that's also a really efficient way to advertise our product. Um, and then finally, we will do sponsorships with local rodeos and fairs just by putting up banners and things like that and bringing our product to those locations so that people who um, are a part of these communities can see the product firsthand and uh, you know, be exposed to it. All right, so um, initially we're gonna directly target Oregon because um, we know the market the best and also um, cattle and cattle related um, products are a huge export of the state. So this is a map showing um, the different types of cattle products and just all over agriculture products that Oregon produces. And we're gonna specifically target this southeastern corner because that's um, where most of the ranchers are and it's a huge market for this product. And then for place, we're gonna have two main channels of distribution. The first channel is gonna be your average um, large feed stores. Some examples of that is Coastal Farm and Ranch, Big R Stores, and Grange Co-op, where um, they have plenty of other hay wraps and agriculture products, so it'll fit right in. And then we're also gonna have a subscrip subscription service for ranchers that live a little bit further out there and who have continual orders, it's just so that it'll get delivered right to their door. And also, just to get our brand a little bit more out there and um, you know, have the customers learn a little bit more about it, we are thinking of creating a partnership with one of these large um, feed stores, maybe like Coastal, so that they can have people in the store um, t telling the customers about it, um, exhibitions and things like that, just to get our brand a little bit more out there. So as expansion goes for our product, um, the, the big thing that we'd like to look towards is expanding out of Oregon. Um, another thing to kind of add on to our customer engagement and retention model is that we would like to do some form of subscription service where um, each growing season, uh, the ranchers in Southern Oregon or Eastern Oregon can say, all right, I want this many of these wraps delivered to my local coastal or my home um, in April every year so I can use them for the bailing season, you know, day in, day out. And so um, we'd like to use this technology kind of in countries that are developing that don't have a lot of space to grow hay. Um, I think that would be a huge market for us. Also, we'd like to expand into um, other different sizes of bales, other animal species, um, as you can kind of see on the screen. Um, and agriculture is a huge component, especially precision ag agriculture and things like this because we have a growing population and more hay retention means more cattle helping us feed a growing world and that sort of thing. I think that's all we got. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Any questions? So what is, um, so you said the cost, or sorry, price is $90 for Oregon customers, and then it moves to 120 to 130 outside of Oregon. Is that, can you clarify? No, so originally we're going to have the 90 price for the roll, and then when we get the value-added prices after like a year, six months of a trial period, and if it goes successfully, we can bump up that price a little more. And then the variability comes with because different minerals in different regions are going to cost different. So, um, for instance, Oregon's really depleted of what? Uh, selenium. Selenium. Yeah, selenium or like uh -huh. calcium, um, different minerals like that might be like different, different price differently. So based on the prices of the minerals and the regions that have access to those minerals, that's where the price difference is going to be. And what's the competition as far as um, other, your competition, what are they charging it for as far as without the plastic? I mean, what's the, what's the price difference? Titan for your average roll of regular plastic charges about $85 a roll. Um, we like to look into our product as being innovative and different from the competition because it combines that mineral component with the bale retention and the wrap that will hold everything together, which is saves both time and money for the ranchers. So there's not really a product like this out there. 
And the mineral cost is normally, it's like 25 to $50 per bag. So you're saving money on buying the minerals as well. Uh, I assume you're comfortable that the product, and I know I'm not going to ask about how it's made, but uh, can handle the, the strength, the tinsel strength is su sufficient to handle the weight loads you're dealing with. Absolutely. I, I um, knowing firsthand from doing nothing but feeding these bales my entire childhood, uh, I, I would say that it definitely will have the strength to, uh, to withstand that. Um, it's kind of surprising. You would think that uh, a bale of that size would really uh, kind of fall apart outside on the edges, but I don't know why they don't expand. Well, I think it's because of the wrap, the way so the balers work. pomegranates can have a lot of strength when they're put into film. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had another question. Um, Two, actually. Um, any thoughts about applying to USDA for any grant applications to uh, develop the product and or patent it and or uh, promote it? I would be interested in looking into that after I graduate, absolutely. And I know USDA definitely yep. gets involved in products. Absolutely. Yep, I would be interested in that. And the other is any thoughts on who you would target to sell your business to at some point in time? Um, I think the the big ones, uh, the company that we go through for our bale wrap is, is Titan, um, but it's kind of a specialty product, so I don't know if their company wants to kind of expand into that market. Um, but it kind of depends on, on who wants to look into it. So my, my question is around the integrity of the film. How much time would this film be wrapped on hay that's outdoors or in high moisture conditions or under sunlight in terms of the integrity of the film? So that is an excellent question. And uh, the big thing to understand is that when a prod, like around hay bale, for instance, when it's baled, oftentimes they are stored um, underneath some sort of shed or covering, mm -hmm. um, first off. The wrap itself is primarily for hay retention. It's, it's to keep more hay inside the bales, so you get more hay um, to the cattle. It would definitely have to be a balance between delivering the minerals and durability. Um, and so I think we can engineer a product that will hold up well enough. How are you going to determine if the dosage of minerals going, is getting distributed evenly to all of the cattle that consume the hay that was wrapped in this film? So that is a very important question. Um, normally when minerals distributed, we distribute about every three weeks, a 50 pound sack of minerals. And you can watch cattle behavior when they're deficient um, in, in the trade, we call it salt. Um, they'll come to the mineral bucket, eat until they are, I don't wanna say overstuffed, but have eaten too much of the mineral and then they won't be deficient in it anymore. I'm thinking that this will be similar to that, but without having tested it or done anything like that, we can't be sure with how they're gonna to react to it. My guess is they're gonna be drawn to it if they're somewhat deficient. Um, but in the ba bale, uh, bale feeders, when it's, getting, when it's getting all mashed up and stuff, it'll kind of cut up the film and the minerals so that it'll be evenly mixed throughout the hay. So um, it won't be like one concentration or like one cow gets the film, it'll be cut up within the entire Bale. Cool. The other thing I wanted to tell you is you might look at hay, um, hay production in Oregon. It's, I think it's in one of the top 10 commodities produced in the state, and we're a major exporter of hay already. Um, so if you're interested in talking with one of the exporters, please get in touch with me and I'll connect you. Our research said hay was two and cattle's three, but they switch a lot. As far Thank as the subscription, I have one more question. The subscription service, I think, is a great idea. Um, would there be a minimum that I would have to, to purchase from you in order to keep the subscription service? I would say the minimum would probably be um, two or three rolls, but the rolls are relatively large um, most of the time, depending on how big your commercial operation is. Um, any operation that has one of these large wrappers has invested considerably in it already. And so my, my guess is that they're going to be ordering a decent amount of rolls to the point where we won't have to put a, rest a real restriction on the subscription service.